Hello, I'm Robert Payton, and welcome to What Are the Three Woes from the Book of Revelation. Well, the word woe is just like you, it says sounds. Woe you give to a horse, it is a command. So, in Revelation 8.13, we find a lone eagle, a single eagle, which we know now is an angel from Revelation chapter 4, if you've been following any of my series on the book of Revelation. If not, please subscribe. And you will get a lot of information you've never heard before in the book of Revelation because our preachers and teachers out there don't teach any of this. But the three woes are three announcements. So you have a lone eagle giving three announcements. And he's flying in mid-heaven. Well, three announcements, three commands. There are three commands going throughout the earth. Now this occurs right at Revelation 8, 13, which is right after the first four plagues. Now the tr trumpets, there's only seven plague angels. We got four trumpets, and then we have this lone eagle. Now the bowls follow right after each trumpet. Trumpet one, bowl one. Trumpet two, bowl two. That's a plague. Plague one, plague two. We talked about this in my uh, the series that this chart comes from. Uh, the book of Revelation is so simple. I think this was part four. But this is an insert I'm doing just for the three woes. So, you had a resurrection. God's day of vengeance on his enemies. That took place on the day of um, Feast of Trumpets. And then we have a few days later, we have the Day of Atonement. And this is when the three woes come in. This is when Christ is going to come down. And as I said before in the other videos, the book of Revelation is not meant to be read from beginning to end and expect it to make sense. It will not make sense beginning to end. If you read it like that and expect everything, the prophecies, everything's a prophecy about our future. A lot of these prophecies have already taken place with the destruction of Jerusalem, which occurred in our past. Uh, in chapter 12 and then currently we have the beast we are living in the beast out of the sea the beast is a religion out of the sea nations a religion out of the nations this is a Middle East book it's a religion out of the Middle East nations okay the Bible there's there's lots of anti-Christ people and groups and people that are against Christ throughout the world but the Bible only specifically talks about the Middle East so it's the Middle East religion against God. And it started back with Nebuchadnezzar, who was the first head of the Red Dragon. And then other kings followed. Six more kings followed, and hence the seven heads. All right. That is all in my other videos. Let's, let, me, let me not ramble on and get to the three woes. Well, the three woes are three announcements. So you're looking for, you got a lone eagle angel. Again, uh, Revelation chapter 4, the four living beings are four groups or types of angels. And there's millions and millions of them. You've got that surround God's throne. And the first one is the lion angels. The second group is the ox angels. The third is the human looking angels. And the fourth group is these eagle angels. And so when Christ returns, and I'll explain how you compile this together. When he returns, a lone eagle was flying, followed by three other angels with three commands to the people left on the earth. Now, these people that are left on the earth are also people out of hell. Because I have an, in my book, I explain, and in part three, I believe, I explain that there is a resurrection from hell at the same time we are resurrected and taken up to meet our Lord in the air hell is resurrected to face judgment and their judgment would be ruling being ruled and reign over by God's people and Christ and so anyway uh, I know that sounds crazy but it's in the Word of God and I've proven all this and so anyway, let's get to Christ returning. Now, Revelation 8, 13, it stops right there. Now, I want to pick up and give you a little information on numbers. Eight is new beginning. Seven is completion. Six is man. Five is grace. Four 
is a very nice number. It's a, a total change. Three is the Trinity. Two is people, they, you know, the church says it's, well, that's division. No, it's confirmation. When two or more are gathered, it's confirmation. Look at the positive side of God. Don't dwell on negative things. And, of course, one is God the Father. Nine, though, is wrath, which is why in chapter 8 of the book of Revelation, well, chapter 7, let's go to chapter 7, we'll talk about the resurrection. All of chapter 7 is about our ne the next resurrection coming up. And it's the completion. The completion of the age of the Gentiles is completed in Revelation chapter 7 when the church of God, all of God's church, not the church of God, but all of God's people around the world, every nation, tribe, language, people that serve God, the Most High, are taking, uh, taken up. Those that are dead are raised, and then the remains would be taken up meet, meet the Lord in the air. So, I'm jumping off track again. I'm bad about that. So anyway, Revelation uh, chapter 7 is all about the resurrection about the completion of the age of the Gentiles, which is when Christ will return. The age of the Gentiles is two days, two times, a day to God's a thousand year, years to man. So Jesus was telling his disciples what he read on the outside of the scroll, which told him that there's an upcoming destruction of Jerusalem, but then he said after two days, or after two times, which is turns out to be 2,000 years after the age of the Gentiles is fulfilled. Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, Revelation 6, 12. Then the sun will go dark and the moon turns to blood. That is when he destroys, on the day of vengeance, right after his people are taken up, he destroys his enemy, the whore of Babylon. And so it completes the age of the Gentiles. The edge age of the Gentiles is going to be 2,000 years after the destruction of Jerusalem, which occurred between 66 and 70 AD. I'd say, I'd, I'd, I'd mark her uh, 67, because Israel was uh, got Jerusalem back in 1967, so that's probably the Jubilee year on God's calendar. And so, 2,000 years from that time, from the destruction of the, uh, from destruction of Jerusalem, it's going to land right around 2067. That is going to be the age of the Gentiles. It's going to be completed. I will look for Christ to return sometime after that. He's not coming tomorrow. I don't care how bad America's suffering or the rest of the world has suffered. And everybody's had their tribulation time. The tribulation is 6,000 years long. We are in the end times now, which is the 2,000 years. Um, those that come out of the Great Tribulation are those that are coming out of separation from God. And that's 6,000 years worth of mankind. So, anyway, let's get back to this. Uh, Revelation chapter 8, new beginning. Because God destroys his enemy right here. Day of vengeance. You got the first four plagues. Okay. And then also a new beginning right at the very last verse of Revelation chapter 8. Verse 13, we have the eagle angel declaring... In mid heaven, now he's flying them into heaven. So here's the key words: mid, he mid heaven, three announcements from angels. That is why you go to Revelation chapter 14, verse six and seven. It starts out with saying, "Another angel with everlasting good news is flying over the earth, telling the people about the good news." That's the first woe. That's the first announcement. The second announcement is the Another angel, a second one, declaring that Babylon has fallen, Revelation 14, 8. And then another angel after that one, a third one, uh, those worshiping the beast, I had die on here, so <laughs> I changed it to burn because um, death is going to be done away with. But these people will burn for eternity if they still worship the beast after this announcement is made. They still have a chance. God is all about giving people a second chance. Even the people in hell, they will be raised up and they'll be given the opportunity to serve God. It's going to be hard, very hard for them during that millennial reign. They're going to work by the sweat of their brow. They're going to, it's going to be manual labor. They're going to be doing things that they're told a thousand years worth of it. However, nothing 
will compare it to where they came from out of hell. And they'll know that. But yet, after the millennial reign of Christ, Satan's released. He releases his demons and they they lie to everybody or make promises. I don't know what. And they believe it. And so they all come against God at that, at that time. So anyway, so you, the three woes, the three announcements from Revelation chapter 14. So each chapter is an order. But each, whenever it says, and then I saw, and then I saw, that's John seeing another vision. These visions collate together. Just like the vision of the trumpets in Revelation 8, and the vision of the bowls in Revelation 9, I'm sorry, uh, in Revelation 16. So you got trumpets in 8 and 9, and then uh, the bowls in Revelation chapter 16. But they go together like this. It goes trumpet one, bowl one. That's plague number one. There's only seven plague angels. There's only seven plague angels that went in. They, they were in, if you can combine, we talked about this in the uh, series I'm doing. This won't be in the series. It'll be separate. But um, go to the uh, book of Revelation, it's so simple series, and watch that. I'll try not to talk too much. But anyway, um, we find, this is the chapters in order, that Christ did was before these, and Christ enters, he goes into Jerusalem, this is where he goes into Jerusalem, he is seen on the earth, and I uh, went over what he does in the Old Testament, you got to read the Old Testament, if you don't read the Old Testament, you're not going to understand the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation unlocked the sealed book of Daniel, when you use the codes in the book of Revelation to unlock the sealed book of Daniel, then you understand Daniel, and it's not what we were taught in the church, a lot of it is not. Some of it is, but a lot of it's not in the church, but what we were taught in the church. But the other problem is mistranslated words and scriptures in our Bibles from the King James Version that are totally inaccurate. And you have to look these up. And luckily in the book of Revelation, it's mainly, they're mainly covering up the resurrection, which leads me to assume that it was the religion of the Sadducees throughout the generations that did not believe Christ was the Messiah, nor did they um, believe in a resurrection, because they covered and changed key words about our resurrection to confuse people. In Revelation chapter 7, the word harm does not mean harm. Okay, It means uh, to judge or to hurt in the old King James. Um, so you have to you have to you have to study. So anyway, um, but that's the three woes. Simply put, now we see in uh, oh gosh, where was it? Um, Revelation chapter nine, verse uh, twelve. The first woe was passed. First woe was passed, which means it was completed. And this comes after the fifth trumpet, but before the sixth trumpet that is completed. Now. We've only had four trumpets here, but down over here, after the millennial crisis, is where the, the fifth plague, the sixth plague, and the seventh plague, that's the fifth uh, trumpet and bowl, the sixth trumpet and bowl, and the seventh trumpet and bowl are. So you will find that once the fifth trumpet is blown, and that's when there's five months for Satan's followers He's going to plague them to death and make them take a mark. And that's the only time, that the mark of the beast. You know, the, the, they say the vaccines, the mark of the beast. They say what the, uh, Hitler did to the Jews is the mark of the beast. All that can be like, yeah, it's, it's against Christ. It's Luciferian it's, and all that. But it's not what the 666 in the scriptures are talking about. If you read it carefully, the mark comes after the millennial reign of Christ. And that has not occurred yet. So the vaccine is not the mark of the beast. Although, I don't, don't believe in it. Uh, God created our bodies a certain way, and when man starts messing with the DNA and RNA, and I probably shouldn't have put this in there, but it'll probably fly. So, anyway, the first woe, is completed right before the sixth trumpet. And the purpose of the trumpets, the purpose of the plagues, the trumpets and bowls, is to bring those who do not want to serve God 
to the battle at the very end. And that's the, that's the sole purpose of the trumpets and the bowls, the seven plagues. That's what the scripture says it is. It's just to bring those that do absolutely do not want to have nothing to do with God to that battle, and they will be judged afterwards. So, the good news, they've had the good news for the thousand years, because again, these the, the fifth, sixth, and seventh trumpet occur after the millennial reign of Christ, because it's only bad stuff happening for the bad people. Not God does not put bad stuff on you. God does not bring you bad stuff. God is good. As one pastor puts it, what God is good all the time. Okay, he doesn't put bad stuff on you. So it, this is for the just the bad the bad people, and it's basically it's Satan doing it to his own people. Okay, so uh, it's completed right between the fifth and sixth, which means the good news. The chance to receive that good news is gone. At that sixth trumpet, the good news is over. For those who, and it's, it, that's it. That's the end of grace for regular people, if they haven't already accepted it. So, the second one is Babylon has fallen. Babel, Babylon. Okay. It passes or is completed right before the seventh trumpet. Okay. And this is probably hard to see. This is a horrible camera. Sorry. Uh, but right before the seventh trumpet, it's Revelation. Um, I can figure out what verse it was. 11 or something. Uh, chapter 11. Yeah, uh, that trumpet, right before the seventh trumpet is blown, the second woe was completed. And that just means that Babylon is, is then totally destroyed. It is gone. The Babylonian religion is gone. Satan's religion is gone. It's kaput. Okay? And then there'll be the seventh trumpet, which sometime after that seventh trumpet is the last resurrection the first was first corinthians 15 23 and 24 jesus if you if you have a bible that puts the punctuation in there properly it says the messiah was the first jesus was the first resurrected of the new covenant then those raised along with him which is in matthew 27 verses 50 through 53 they rose up with christ or right behind christ and then they went to the city. That's new. That's the Jerusalem. That says many holy people. It doesn't say all the holy people. Just many of them. And I don't know who or why, but they uh, they got a chance to live what it felt like to live under grace rather than the law, because Christ fulfilled the law. So they're the second group. The third group is right way over here, right before His Day of Vengeance, which is scheduled somewhere after 2067, but it will occur on the Feast of Trumpets. Um. I'm 99.1% positive. Uh, that third resurrection will take place. And that's when everyone, it says, the scriptures say all will be resurrected. Some to everlasting life, some to everlasting shame and abhorrence. So that's it. It doesn't say everlasting life and back to hell you go. All will be resurrected. Scriptures don't lie. All means all. Every every mankind all of mankind will be resurrected even the ones that were resurrected in the second resurrection will be resurrected again because they just lived out their life again under grace and then they died and uh, they're resurrected back to, to help which is the same thing we will be when you're resurrected at the third resurrected rec well, resurrection you will be raised just like a healthy young person a healthy person young healthy person you're not going to be given an immortality yet. That does not occur until the very, very end. That does not occur until after every last person has had their chance, had that second last chance for the good news. And Because it, it's only at the seventh shofar, that, which is uh, coincides with, um, agrees with, 
1 Corinthians 15, verse 24, because you got in 23, you got the Messiah's the first fruits, those raised along with him at the time of his coming, which is when he's coming to begin his set up all this for his millennial reign to come into Jerusalem, etc. Okay, the third resurrection, that's the third. And then verse 24 says, and then at the culmination, at the very, very end, when he hands over the kingdom of God the Father. See, we learned that Adonai seals up the ten of, uh, ten of witness with his glory, and no one's allowed in here, right back here. It is later on, after this, right here, when the seventh trumpet blows, that ten of witness opens up, and the Ark of the Covenant is seen in the temple. He opens it back up because he... Christ is handing over authority from the millennial reign. He's handing over that authority to God the Father. And when he does that, it'll be at the seventh shofar, which agrees with the culmination at the fourth resurrection when we go from, uh, I think it's Thessalonians, from mortality to immortality. Okay? And that's when we receive our immortal bodies. We're not going to receive them here. At the third resurrection, when we get taken up to the clouds by the angels, we're not going to fly with our superpowers or nothing like that. Angels are coming down. Angels will come down. Those four different types of angels are going to come down and pick up God's people and take them up to meet him in the clouds. And what's going to be left on this earth is all those who did not accept Christ throughout human history. An unprecedented amount of people from the beginning of time, from the beginning of Adam. You know, we're not talking millions. We're not talking zillions. I don't know how many. Zillions of people. An uncountable amount of people. Because there's an uncountable amount of people coming to the battle at Armageddon. And not a 200 million man army. That's mistranslation too. Uh, that does not mean 200 million man army. And, we, and they just assume it's China because this is Bible is referencing um, Asia Minor, and they just assume it's Asia, and oh, who's got, you know, and everybody wants this tribulation to come tomorrow, so they go, well, China's got the most people, it's going to be them. It's a whole lie from the church. You know, it, it's just, it's stuff, it's hearsay. Hearsay, which is not scripture. So, I had to unlearn everything I learned. I, I know all this stuff y'all are talking about. I've been, in a, I've been brought up in all that stuff. And it's, it's all wrong. It's too many contradictions. I'll sit any pastor down and I can have them all confused with the book of Revelation because I know the contradictions. I can ask them, why, why, why does that angel in the beginning hand out the bowls? But then later on, you know, John sees the angel with the bowls again. And then later he sees the angel again with the bowls full of the plagues. But he, he you know, he did it earlier in, in, the, in the book of Revelation. He gave them away. Does that make sense? If you read the book of Revelation like they teach you to read it in the in the church, you know, from beginning to end, and there's a seven-year tribulation and a coming Antichrist and all that garbage, yeah, you're going to get confused. They've been conf Everyone's been confused. I promise you, if you study with me, you're going to know it's going to be so simple. The book of Revelation is so simple. Children can learn this. Children can learn this. It's, it's just, it's so simple. But they've confused it. So much. You know, it's like religious politicians. So anyway, there, um, the final the final woe announcement that's announced when Christ returns. <clears throat> Those who worship the beast would basically burn eternally. Revelation 14, 9. And notice the number 9 means wrath. Okay? God's total change of wrath. God's total change to a new beginning. God's total change for a man is completed. <laughs> okay. Um, you got to look at the numbers, too. They're, they're, it's, God is God. If, he, if he's not God, he's not God. Do you understand that? Let that sink in a little bit. So, we find, or well, we do not find, anywhere in the Bible that says the third woe is completed. Or passes. Nowhere in the Bible. Nowhere in the book of Revelation. Nowhere else. Do you know why? Because this is eternal. That's why I put eternally. Because those at the very end, this is this is a warning from here, but it's for the rest of time, for eternity. 
that if you worship that beast after this point, you're going to be forced to receive that mark by Satan because you're going to, you're going to, God's not going to have nothing to do with you. And especially a thousand years of just wonderful grace and what this world can become under, under God's rule and, and throw it all away at the end. And that's what they do. They're weak. They'll throw it all away and they'll burn eternally. And that's why there's the, this third woe never ends because it's eternal. That's why you don't find it in the Bible, because that, that's just the end of it. So anyway, that's basically it for the three woes. Uh, hope you enjoyed it, and we will, this will be on a standalone, but if you want, just please subscribe and check out my other videos, uh, The Rapture Truth, The Third Resurrection. You know, nowhere in the Bible, I got a video, Rapture Truth, The Third Resurrection, Watch that. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that there's a resurrection before the millennial reign, during the millennial, uh, I mean, so before the seven-year tribulation, somewhere in the middle of the seven-year tribulation, or anywhere after a seven-year tribulation. The Bible doesn't say that, just like it never, nowhere in the Bible does it say there's a seven-year tribulation. It's an accumulation of ideas that somebody put together and wrote books, and everybody just went with it. And they've deceived God's people for for you know fifty something years now, the deception it's it's just crazy. So, um, you know, people get to heaven and they're like, "When's all going to start? When's the seventy tribulation start?" And they're like, "Come on, right here, go to school." They sit you down in the classroom so you can learn the Bible. So, um, <clears throat> uh, so anyway, um, but it talks about before the millennial reign and after the millennial reign in Revelation chapter 20. So let that stuff sink in. And again, I got two free ebooks out there if you want the really short version. It's uh, the second book is the book of Revelation is so simple. It is available for free download at smashwords.com. And uh, book of Re Revelation is so simple. This is the first book I did is more complex and a lot longer, but it has a lot of information in it. And I admit, I did make a few mistakes in there. But at least I admit to it. <laughs> and that is, uh, but you'll, you'll see them because the second book, to, you know, covers that. The first book is Revelations of Grace and Mercy, the truest interpretation of the book of Revelation. And both of those books are available for free at smashwords.com. And so, that being said, I hope you have a great day, and I'll see y'all on the next one.